Blog Talk Radio. Hello everyone, this is Chrisum, and I would like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, I'd like to welcome you all in this uh, December... Today's date. This December day. <laughs> I believe it's the 18th. And... Uh, I'd like to welcome you to this conversation. This conversation is going to be a little different than our normal conversation. As, as uh, I am just kind of being directed to surrender to the Kundalini in me for what it wants to be said to you at this time. And so I would like to welcome everybody who is listening in the archives. And uh, so for the future, I would like to to uh, to bring you into this present this present moment. Uh, and you can join this present moment, even though you are in the future and you're coming to this at, a, at another time. Uh, it does, the Kundalini doesn't really care about the ideas of parameters of time. Time is a human concept, not a Kundalini concept. And it'll just step right on in whenever it's ready to. And, and, uh, and so for those of you joining us in the archives, uh, you can be in this present moment with this kundalini, with my kundalini, and with your kundalini. So, you know, it's all good. It's all good. And I'm going to, I would like to, to say some thank yous to Glenn Ola, to Amelia Santara, to John O'Connor, uh, and, you know, to everybody that, that joins in uh, to, to make this kundalini awakening system broadcast come into being. So thank you, everyone. For that, and especially to you listeners. Okay, I'm gonna. I, it is with sincere pleasure that I would like to introduce uh, Amelia Santara into the program. So, hello, Amelia. Hello, Chrism. It's good to be here in this present moment. Um, mm-hmm. I'll begin um, with just uh, letting people know where they can go if they would like to make a donation to support Chrism in the work that he does on the Kundalini Awakening System. And um, Kundalini Awakening System is actually, um, there are many venues on the Kundalini Awakening System. There is this um, here on Blog Talk Radio where Chrism gives us time and teaching for us all to hear. There's also many other places that he does this work as well as Skype and many other places. So I would like to just give you the address that you can go to. And it is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the right-hand side, you will find the Donate button. And once you press that, it's actually very easy to, to follow through and to make a donation. And it's important to know that there is no... Um, expectation of a donation and there is no need to donate but it is very greatly received if you wish to support the work that prison does and indeed if you're in a position to do that remember that looking after your own needs and your family always come first but again I'll give you that website um, address it's www.ascension kundalini.blogspot.com and the other thing that I, I've been announcing now for a while is that we are going to be having um, Kundalini Awakening seminars in the United States and in Ireland at the beginning of 2014. Well, it's going to be in March 2014. The, the uh, seminar that is going to be in Ireland is happening on the 22nd and the 23rd of March. And this will be in Newgrange in County Meath. If you have any interest in attending or if you just want more information about this, um, please do write to me. My address is kundalinimatters at gmail.com. <coughs> and if you're living in, in Europe, um, please know that it's a very short journey by plane to Ireland. And the venue itself is only it's less than 30 minutes from the airport. And when you arrive at the airport, you will be picked up and driven to the venue. So um, do get in contact with me if you would like more information. Um, Also, there's going to be a seminar held in America and the United States on the East Coast. And it's going to be held, uh, we think, in New York. Um, 
I suppose I would just like to let you know that while we have the dates, the dates are the 22nd and the 23rd of March, I have not yet been successful in locating a venue for um, this. Our needs are actually very simple. We don't need much, but our budget is small. And so that is, you know, that is creating a bit of a difficulty at this moment. But I will keep trying. I suppose maybe I would like to just ask if anybody is listening and if they know of um, a place near them. It doesn't have to be central to New York. New York, it can be on the outskirts or any place really on the East Coast. Um, Perhaps you get in contact with me if you've got any suggestions or ideas of a venue. It would be very, very helpful. Our needs are simple, a room. There are, there are many different um, venues that we could have. So if something connects with you as you hear this notification, maybe you would get in contact with me. And that would be at kundalinimatters at gmail.com. And as soon as a venue is actually decided on, I will be able to give out information. But as of now, you could mark in your diary that it is happening somewhere on the East Coast, probably in the New York area, on March the 22nd and March the 23rd. That is definite. So that's the end of my announcement, Prism. And as I say, I'm again looking forward to this conversation and being in the present moment with you and everybody who's listening. Well, it's also an honor to be in the in the present moment with you. Uh, Amelia, can you turn your feedback down, please? Thank you. With you, Amelia, and uh, with everybody who's listening uh, right now, this is great. Okay, so in this episode of your Kundalini Awakening experience, I'm just opening to the communication that wants to come through. And right now I'm looking, you know, I'm being given a lot of entity information. And so this is something that I think is fairly important for people. Now, there are different levels of kundalini awakening in a person, and everybody's different. And so we have our own, um, our own expressions coming through the kundalini awakening event. Uh, but before I get into that, um, if any of the people that are in the chat room guessed 1864 or 1893 or 2473, if you can uh, let me know if the sound is okay, or Amelia, if you can ask John if the sound is okay. And uh, John isn't actually here tonight, Chris, and so we're depending on people in the chat room or somebody to phone in. The number to phone in is um, three four seven. Well, thank you. Thank you. And that number, once again, is uh, area code 347-934-0026. Please call in uh, and and let us know if the sound is coming through okay. This has been something of an issue with Blog Talk Radio, is that the sound can can be a little strange at times. So if, uh, if... if a person could call in, like if uh, if Julie uh, could call in, or two four seven three is typing right now, so yeah, yeah, is the sound okay? I'll wait here for a moment. Looks like folks are typing. Sound is good. Yay! Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So uh, the one of the first things that that I need to explain to you is the instantaneous quality of uh, of Kundalini, and, and and yes, I would like to thank uh, uh, 2473 and Celestial Rubies. Thank you for, for the validation on the sound. Um, the instantaneous quality of Kundalini is that it doesn't have a lot of lag time when it wants to give you a message or. For instance, when it's coming through me, it can actually move my mouth and put words in my mouth uh, as in, instantaneously. Okay, and and so you know, there's not a lot of shaking or, you know, how you'll see some some folks, you know, when they're uh, channeling, uh, say a say a dead person, you know, they kind of go through all these these. Uh, you know, uh, body positions, facial tics, you know, jerking this way, jerking that way. Well, it doesn't happen that way with Kundalini. 
You've got to remember, kundalini is natural to your body. It is as natural as your fingernails, your unpainted fingernails. <laughs> it's as natural as your hair, as your nose, as your eyes, as your blood. It is a part of who you are and how you are. Your body is set up to have this. And so, of course, it's going to be a seamless, a seamless uh, um, gift. And as you open to this gift and it opens itself more to you, you'll understand more of what I'm talking about. But it is instantaneous. It is faster than, than thought, in a sense, because it is there right now, you know, immediately. And it is a... It is a divine consciousness, and so it will give what it feels we need to have with regards to information. Looks like I may have a questioner. Is that right, uh, Amelia? Do I have a questioner there already so soon? Let's see here. Oh, I see they're still having a conversation. Okay, all right. So, yeah. When the kundalini comes up into you, it is instantaneous. It fits you. It fits you like a glove, like a hand in a glove. And so the information that it wants to give to you uh, will be instantaneous. But that can be a little bit of a of a surprising thing. And, and people will kind of expect, well, there should be a lag time. There's a there's a lag time with my phone calls. There's a lag time with with you know some computer communications. There's a lag time. You know, here and there, so there must be a lag time with the Kundalini. Well, there must not necessarily be a lag time with Kundalini. Uh, you know, there's no real lag time when it comes to to uh, to making a choice or making a decision that you have to make in your life, whether it's lifting a finger or or you know buttoning the top of, of your of your shirt. Okay, there's no more lag times with those. Kundalini is this way. It fits you like that shirt. Okay? So as we, as we understand that, uh, the, con- the context that I'm placing this in is your comfort and your ability to have comfort uh, within the Kundalini awakening, you know, as it, as it, as it comes through your system. Uh, hello, Tim. Hello, hello, everybody. Now, it may not be comfortable at first. Um, when the Kundalini comes up and, and, it, and it, you know, starts to rearrange the, the dynamics of your chakras, it starts to to uh, to remake the dynamics of your of your uh, of your consciousness as it lives its life. You know, the the, the higher mental consciousness and the and the the ego consciousness, you know, as those dynamics play out, well, the kundalini is going to have its say within them. And this is something that you're not going to be used to if you're new to the kundalini. And, and I'll tell you what, even if you're a few years into the kundalini, the kundalini will move in certain ways within your system that are surprising to you. When I first felt the, the kundalini, I didn't know it was the kundalini. You know, it, my spine literally started turning into something that was doing serpentine movements. Okay, so if you can imagine your spine turning into a serpent, and if you've seen the way a serpent moves, you know, it kind of goes from left to right. Well, that's exactly how, how that was moving. And, of course, if you don't have any kind of a, of a reference point for that, you just think things are getting really weird, and, you know, it's the last thing I'm going to tell my MD is my spine turned into a serpent. So, uh, you know, you, you begin to learn to accept these new Experiences, and you begin to validate these new experiences based upon your acceptance of them. And so, with regards to the awakening of the Kundalini in a person, surrender to this. Talk with it. It listens to you. It can hear you. It can hear your thoughts, but it can also hear your voice. And I mean, you can talk with it the way we're talking right now. I mean, if if you were actually talking with me. Uh, you can have this conversation. You can have this conversation with it. And you can begin to mold uh, your awakening experience based upon the, uh, 
the conversation that you're having with it. And then, you know, it's a fairly agreeable consciousness. It's not mean. It's not a, a hurtful entity at all. It's it's a fairly agreeable consciousness, but it knows your agenda better than you know your agenda. And so within that knowledge, it will insist on certain things being done for you. One of the first things that occurs is is you are you are given insight, visual insight, audio insight into uh, uh, one moment here. into what we'll call the spiritual worlds, so the spiritual multiverse. Okay, and so all of a sudden, you know, you'll have participation in an area that you know very, very, very little about. And in a way, this is exactly as it should be, because you get to start from, from, you know, from a very, very uh, protected and young position within the Kundalini, and you, you know, you're able to mature uh, within the Kundalini in a, in a, in a way that, that if you're listening to this information, will be very helpful for you. You'll run into entities, discarnate consciousness, and this discarnate consciousness may jump into you, uh, much like a parasite would would try to jump into you, or you know, a, uh, any like a mosquito or a flea or anything of that nature. You know, you're going to have this discarnate entity, you know, wanting to to partake of, of the energies that your body is 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 providing, is is exuding from itself. Don't be afraid of this. Uh, I don't care what the entity looks like. Uh, it's a dark, mean, evil-looking thing, or it's a bright, beautiful, lovely, flowery-looking thing. It doesn't matter. Neither of them have control over you, unless you allow that to be the case through your fear, or if you have another type of a situation that you're that you're fostering. Some people in the uh, in the realms of uh, magic or things of that nature, you know, they'll. They have other agenda. With the Kundalini, I will suggest that you do not go into these magical areas. I see where this is leading. Okay, so in some uh, forms of, of, of application and thought, um, people would use entities to do certain things. And and that's still the case today. Uh, way back in the 14th century, 13th and 14th century, there was a mage, M-A-G-E, a mage or a magi called uh, Abremelin, Abremelin the mage. And he is a good guy. He's a really good guy. Uh, he had his heart in the right place, and he had his purity in the right place, and he was able to do the things that he wrote down instructions for other people to do. One of those was using demons or, or malevolent consciousness uh, to do God's work. And that their punishment, really, uh, uh, their punishment is being forced to do God's work, the, the work of love, the work of grace, the work of truth, the work of honesty, the work of tolerance, the work of forgiveness. Uh, you know, it's painful for those types of entities to do those types of work, and so the, the magician or the magi was in a position to, to force that work to be done. But, of course, if he slipped up, well, then the, uh, the ensuing trauma would be quite severe, and, and the, the magician would probably not survive it. This is not what we're doing here. I only say that to illustrate that this is not what we are doing here. We are not using uh, magic. We're not using the Golden Dawn. We're not using uh, any of these existent, incorrect, in my opinion, incorrect uh, ways of, of corresponding with the divine within us or, or with the, uh, the, uh, the discarnate entities that are outside of us. Um, I don't suggest that you take much of a notice of them at all. And I know I've mentioned this in other, in other programs, but it bears repetition. Entities will see you, and because they see you and you can see them, that you know, a communication is made. Uh, if an entity jumps into you, well, hey, don't panic over that. 
Don't panic over that. You just go straight to your kundalini, and you give your love, and you give your attention to the kundalini. The entity that's jumping inside you is trying to distract you from your path, trying to to give you fear, to make you afraid of your path, to give you, uh, you know, to make promises to you that, oh, geez, if you let me do this, this, and that, then I'll give you this, this, and that. And it's not a barter. It's not a trade. It's not a commercial enterprise at all. Okay. You ignore that entity and you, you give yourself completely to the kundalini or to, to the people or the teacher or the community that the kundalini has guided you towards. Okay. It isn't so much that others are there to do things for you, such as entities or teachers or community. They're not there to do things for you, but they are there to give you the environment and the, and the, uh, the ability to do things for yourself through the Kundalini. So here's something. Well, let's just say that uh, uh, somebody has an entity come in and it lodges itself in the Anahata or the heart chakra. Oh my gosh, you know, I can't, you know, I feel so devoid of love. I feel so devoid of life. I don't even like anyone. I don't even like myself. I don't even like this or that, you know. And so all of the levels of the Anahata are being, you know, affected. Not all the levels, but, you know, some of the more popular levels, <laughs> for lack of a better term. You know, the that of compassion, that of sympathy, that of love, that of grace, that of beauty and joy and appreciation of of others and of self and things of that nature. Wow, well, all of a sudden that's gone. And what is that telling a person? It's telling the person that more focus needs to be given on those qualities of love that have been just taken away from you by virtue of the presence of this entity in your heart chakra. You have to remember, you have the kundalini. So the kundalini is absolutely aware of what that entity is doing and where that entity is and why that entity is there. The kundalini knows, and it's giving you the opportunity to pass this test. Okay? And so, you know, using this, you know, extending this example even further, we would, we would look at what the entity is taking and how that can be replaced. Well, then, oh, we have to consciously appreciate love. It doesn't just come naturally anymore. We have to consciously make the move into a loving uh, environment. Uh, we have to manufacture the love, whereas it used to come easily. It used to, be, it used to come very simply, and you know, it's like, oh, I love that, or I love this. Um, now you have to manufacture that love. In other words, now you have to make that love. You have to provide that love. You have to provide that love. And then, of course, you know, I would, I would, you know, if you were my student, I would say, well, okay, uh, uh, student, I want you to give the anahata the love that it used to give you before that entity crawled in. Well, then, of course, you're going to be exercising the anahata with or without the entity. And in other words, the entity just doesn't really matter anymore. The kundalini, is, you know, you, you have taken the advice, uh, and if I were your teacher, you'd say, okay, uh, you know, I obey, because I'm, I'm, I am going to manufacture, I'm going to create this love that it used to be given to me naturally. I'm going to create this love, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create it so well that it is no different from the love that I have been, that I have been gifted to, to receive from the anahata as it's working in a normal way. Well, now that this entity is lodged in here and it's creating a challenge, well, I am going to come up to that challenge and I'm going to create that love and I'm going to create that environment and I'm not going to be dependent upon that environment being created for me. I am going to create that love. I am going to create that, that sympathy, that, that, uh, that tolerance, that patience that forgiveness, that grace within me. I am going to create that. And what you'll find is the entity will have to leave because it's, you know, 
unless it's being used by the kundalini, which in this in this case it would be a it would be a kundalini thing because most of the negative entities want to stay as far from love as they can get. They wouldn't necessarily attach to your fourth. They'd probably more certainly attach to your fifth. Okay, but I'm just using the force as an example. And so you create the expression that that chakra would normally create. You know, you know how you feel about those who you love or things that you love? That's all there for you. You know, just because it, you know, it, it's not... Uh, coming to you the way that it may have once come to you doesn't doesn't mean that it it did any less than it was. Okay, and so in many ways within the early Kundalini awakening, you will be forced to create the reality that the Kundalini wants you to create. If you're hearing this instruction, if by by some workings of grace you were able to come and tune into this program and. At this time in your life and at this time in your in your expression of the Kundalini, well then this is here for you. This this seniority over your energetic anatomy is for you to have. And by seniority, I mean that this body, this spiritual equation in flesh, is yours to have. There is only one other force of consciousness that you will share this with, and that is the kundalini. Other, you know, entities can come and they can embed themselves in your body, like, you know, you can you can have an embedded entity in your calf or your shin or your foot or your neck or your, you know, anywhere on the body, really, an entity can embed itself. But it's going to have to play by your rules or the rules of your kundalini. That means if it's along for the ride, well, it's, it's going to partake of the ride in, in a very, very uh, uh, strong way. And so as you, manu- as, you, as you exhibit this love, as you, as you express this love, as you express all the ramifications of love, tolerance, forgiveness, patience, trust, you know, all of the different levels of love, well, that entity is going to have to experience that love too. And if it's just an entity that's, that's afraid of death, well, then that's okay. It'll, it'll come along for the ride, and, and by, by some form of spiritual osmosis, it will, it will partake of, of, the, of the instructions and the love that, that is being given through you uh, to everything in the environment. It's not just those things that are embedded in yourself, but, but it, remember the footprint of the kundalini is exceptionally huge. Everything within that footprint, whether they know you, whether you know them or not, they're going to come under the influence of the love or of the quality of expression that the kundalini wants to to bring through you. And so I don't want you to be afraid of these entities. If you see them, fine, you know, if they're they're dark, although they're typically going to be some sort of a challenge for you. You know, they're they're going to have an, an ugly, terrifying face. You know, they'll have all of these little... What's the word? Crutches. <laughs> they'll have all these little crutches that they'll have to use in order to to uh, affect a certain response from you. And so I don't really necessarily want you to buy into any of these responses that they're fishing for. Okay. They don't get to control you. They don't get to, to uh, hurt you or harm you unless you allow them to. You know, they don't get to do that. You give yourself to your kundalini. You give yourself to your kundalini teacher. If you have a kundalini teacher that that the kundalini has led you to, that you're sure that the kundalini has led you to, then go with that teacher. Go with that teacher too. I mean, the teacher and the kundalini, uh, you know, within the context of you, well, they're almost one and the same. If it led you to a teacher, that it wants you to partake of what that teacher has to offer, and it doesn't want you to partake halfway. It wants you to go all the way in that participation. Okay? So if you do have a blockage, and, I, and I've been getting some calls lately, uh, you know, people having blockages in their necks and in their, uh, in their heart chakra or their third chakra, you know, and, and, and even... You know, some people who are pre-kundalini, expressive pre-kundalini, i.e., they haven't had a spinal sweep, but the, the, the energy is moving from chakra to chakra, which it will do, 
It will, it will uh, migrate from chakra to chakra, opening that chakra, or getting ready for that chakra to be opened in sequence with the rest of the chakras in the system. And, and then, of course, you know, that's leading to a spinal sweep. But before that occurs, a lot more uh, practice needs to be done by the individual. And I will, I will suggest that uh, people go to the uh, YouTube channel, Kristen.Kundalini, or to Kundalini Awakening Systems One.com, and that's the number one.com. Uh, we have groups in Facebook, Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point, Kundalini Awakening Systems One, uh, a Kundalini Ashram, Kundalini Healing. This is all on Facebook. Okay. There's a Shakti Pot going on right now, so. Uh, Kristen Kundalini Shakti Pot is another group that uh, Shakti Pot is basically transferring my energy uh, into your uh, into your system and activating your Kundalini by virtue of, of my energy, my Kundalini going into you. Uh, so there are a lot of different vectors of activity within the Kundalini awakening that takes place, and it's taken place 24/7. It's not. You know, going to eight to five and then saying, "Oh, okay, well, gosh, I got my union break coming up." You know, it's not doing that. It's with you all the time. Matter of fact, the big deal is to is to have the conversation that will allow you to do your job uh, and focus on your job, focus on your driving, focus on the things that 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 affect your physical existence in a way that that allows you to have the kundalini. Kundalini doesn't want to interfere, but you have to ask it not to interfere, or it will just take advantage of the situation and 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 come at you as as full as it deems is necessary. Okay, and your ego may have a little bit of a problem with that, and, it, and then the ego will say, "Oh, well, this is too much. I'm drowning in in symptoms of Kundalini. Please, please stop." You know, and and so it will listen to you to a degree. It will listen to you. Um, as an entity may be lodged in any part of the body, I am not going to suggest that you go into any really long and involved processes to remove it. Okay. Uh, entities are given to kundalini people for reasons of testing. For reasons of testing the ego, for testing the fear, for testing the trust, for testing the faith, for testing the love, for testing the validation of having the kundalini. Okay, people aren't getting entities by accident. Kundalini knows what's occurring, and in many ways is allowing that to occur. Okay, so I want you to understand that. You know, you're not being given kundalini phenomena so that you can get rid of it as quickly as possible. You're, you're being given kundalini phenomena because it's beginning to transform you, and the transformation is the highest priority that the kundalini has. And it's not going to give that up because your ego is screaming over it. You know, oh, no, no, no. I don't, you know, <laughs> I, you know I, I, want, I want my fast car. I want my water skis. I want my snow skis. I want, my, you know, I want to be able to do all the things that I've been able to do before. Well, that may not be the case all the time. You'll have to change, and you'll have to open to that change, and you'll have to be available for that change. I have a student that's going to come out and stay with me at the ashram, and they know who they are. And for those of you that have, that have done that already, you know that when you come out here to stay at the ashram, the kundalini here, which is all over the place, uh, is going to affect certain transformations upon you. But you come out here expecting that to occur, and so you're not blocking it so much. But it's going to bring a lot of the issues that are within you that are coming up for detoxification. You are going to be detoxified while you're here or shortly after you leave. These things are going to come up, and, and they are there for you to release. Uh, from and, and you know some of that is fear of entities and some of that is fear of change and some of that is fear of my life not being in the control vector that I'm used and comfortable with having it in. Uh, you know, for those of you that are very much into your patterns of of life, you know, okay, I get up at eight, I take the dogs for a walk at eight thirty, I put my 
my coffee machine on at eight. You know, when I come back from the dog walk, I and you know, and okay, it's a certain time, and I turn the TV on, or I go to work, or I, or I make a phone call, or I do the. You know, these kinds of of stabilizing activities in a lifetime are are subject to change within the Kundalini. You'll not. Uh, be able to keep your schedule the way that you've been keeping it day in, day out for the last decade. Okay, It's not about you being comfortable as an ego inside of the new changes that are coming about. It's more about you surrendering your ego and opening to the changes that the Kundalini wants to bring into your life. If you have any questions about this, the area code is 347-934-0026. Uh, feel free uh, to make this phone call uh, and, uh, and, and ask, your, ask your questions. Um, hello, Kan Kan Zhao. I see you logged in, so it's a pleasure to, to have you listening to this broadcast. Uh, with regards to the the Kundalini agenda, usurping control over your own personal egocentric agenda, this is going to happen for the rest of your life. This will never go away. Just as your just as your Kundalini awakening uh, transformation will never go away, it may take periods of time as a plateau. Uh, for you to process the amount of change that's already occurred or is occurring. Uh, but you will never be without the kundalini. You don't get to put the kundalini genie back into the bottle. It's a one-way. It's a one-way exit, and it is an exit. That bottle is at the base of your spine, and once that kundalini comes up, well, it comes up, and it's there for the rest of your life. Be okay with that because it's a natural event. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, you, you see the, the, the 12, 13, 14-year-olds coming into uh, puberty, and do you say to them, well, I want you to resist that puberty. Make sure that you don't let your voice change. And if you feel your voice changing, well, make sure that you try to raise it or lower it to, to where it's always been. <laughs> Make sure that you don't let any, any other hair grow on your body. Make sure you don't do that. I want you to resist that. Okay, you can see how foolish it is to resist puberty. Well, it's the same level of foolishness that causes us to want to resist the kundalini. This is puberty for the soul. <laughs> kundalini is puberty for the soul. And the soul is what is animating your body. Your spirit, your soul. I'm using those terms interchangeably right now. Okay. You don't get to resist puberty, and in the same way, you don't get to resist kundalini. And I, want, I don't even want you to try. I want you to look forward to it. You know, the, the, uh, the, 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 the young men, the boys, you know, they're looking at their chins like, gosh, is there a whisker there? I could have swore I saw a whisker there the other day. Oh, my God, what happened to it? My whisker is gone. You know, and the, and the girls are looking at their breast size, and oh my gosh, I wish they were bigger, and oh my, you know, all these different scenarios are, are, are going through. And it's the same thing with the Kundalini. But I would like you to look forward to your Kundalini awakening puberty rather than being afraid of it because of the, cause it might change you, or you might have to change your schedule, or you might have to do this or that. Well, yeah, you, you do have to respond to these changes, but you respond to them in a very welcoming and a very surrendering type of way, just the way you would with puberty. Okay? Just the way you would when, when you, you, you don't, you don't uh, get super glue out and, and, and as, the, as the young man is looking at that whisker, he says, oh, my God, there's a whisker here. I'm going to cut that off and I'm going to plug it up with super glue so it doesn't grow. <laughs> You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Tim, right? Tim Ashworth, I see you there. You know what I mean? You know, when we were young, looking at that mirror, is there a whisker there? Well, if you follow the same, the same uh, logic as with people who are, who are uh, uh, you know, trying to stop their kundalini, well, then that's what you would do. You would try to plug up that hair follicle with super glue. 
<laughs> and you know get a really nasty infection because of it. So the so the scenario is you don't try to you don't try to fix the kundalini. You're not broken because you're having a kundalini awakening event. You're actually doing very very well, very very well. And yes, not too many other people around you're going to be having that. It's not going to be easy to find people to talk with about that. You probably don't want to talk to your MD or your psychologist about kundalini. That's actually one of the worst things you can do because of the level of education that our psychologists and our medical doctors have at the moment, which is basically zip when it comes to kundalini. And zip means zero. You know, they don't have any clue about what's going on, and they're going to look you up online and in their reference books, and they'll go, oh, gosh, well, this just looks like a, gosh, gosh. Hey, hey Nurse nurse Jones, come on over here. Let's, 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 you know, this guy, you know, he's hearing voices. It's like, it's like you know, I don't, I think it's bipolarism. That's what it is. Bipolarism with a positive indication for schizophrenia. Oh, okay, that's what it would be. And they come back into your into the room and say, "Well, Mr. Chrisom, I think you're bipolar, and I think you've got positive uh, indications for schizophrenia. Here, take this drug; it'll all be better. Let me know how it goes." That's it. That's it. So I would not suggest that you uh, you tell people in, a, in in authority positions that you have the Kundalini because it just they don't know what it is, and what they don't know scares them and. And, you know, in many ways, like in the medical, you know, community, what they don't know, well, they'll, they'll just create a situation that, that, uh, that, that works well within their medical concepts. And so, therefore, whether you have it or not, they think you have it, and they want you to have it, and therefore you have it. So don't tell people uh, who don't understand about the kundalini that you have it. It's not going to help. And I know I've mentioned this before, I right? Yeah, yeah. But I, once again, I think it bears, bears repeating. Um, you don't want to go into, these, into, the, into the kundalini with an adversarial mindset. You want to go into the kundalini as, a, as the mindset of a lover or the, or the, the mindset of a, of, a, of a parent and a child. It's not about fighting. It's about loving. It's about changing in a, in a loving way rather than changing in a way that is desperate to to keep this level of love out, that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Here's the number. If you have any kind of a question about your Kundalini awakening uh, situation, please call. It's a United States area code, so if you're outside of the United States, you probably want to dial 001 and then 347-934-0026. Feel free to call in at any time and Amelia will catch your call, and she'll talk with you a little bit about what it is you want to talk about, and then she'll, she'll put you on, on the air. So look at these areas of, of uh, resistance within yourself. Uh, naturally, at first, yes, you'll be afraid, but if you've come to this information, if you've been able to find this, you know, I have to admit, I'm not that very well-known. I'm not very popular. I'm not a... Uh, a best-selling author or a TV star, or a movie star, or even an, you know, <laughs> I'm not even an exceptional radio personality. But you have, oh, hello, Amelia. Oh, I see, you're back. Oh, okay. so- sorry. Okay, Christian. Puberty for the soul. I just love that. I just love it. It's, it's excellent. <laughs> I'd like to actually say something. You know, I'm when you spoke about having a teacher and having a kundalini teacher and you know you are my teacher my kundalini teacher and i have no doubt whatsoever that kundalini led me to my teacher and so my teacher is a source of all of kundalini's teaching to me and it's like you as my teacher and my kundalini you you speak to me as one voice and I know the difference, you know, in my process before I had a, had a teacher, what it was like before I had a teacher, and the difference that has occurred since um, coming to have a Kundalini teacher, since being guided to have a Kundalini teacher. And, you know, the main difference, I suppose, is, well, is my ego response. You know, in the context of having a teacher, <laughs> you probably my my ego doesn't get to control me, you know, 
and to control things the way it's used to. Like surrendering ego to my teacher is surrendering ego to my kundalini. It has been the best thing that I have ever done, really. And it has been the best thing I've done. It's been a gift to myself. My, like my kundalini agenda is driving my life. And my ego now, since I have a teacher, doesn't, it doesn't get to sabotage that journey so much as it used to do before. It's well, let me let, let me ask. Let me, yeah, I know it does. Let me let me ask you something, Amelia. Uh, since uh, since your Kundalini uh, directed you towards me as your teacher, what has changed mm-hmm. in your life that wasn't happening before you had a teacher? Um, oh my goodness, Chris, and everything. What aspects can I speak about? Um, there are so many aspects that have changed. I mean, in terms of like, as I'm saying just there, in terms of my response to what the Kundalini was doing in terms of, say, phenomena or in terms of what I was being directed to do, the resistance, the confusion, the, um, the sort of putting up barriers to it, that, that has changed. And that, of course, has opened up so there's more love in my life, there's healing in my life, and... Um, the way I communicate with my family and people, so much has changed. I mean, in practical terms in my life, it's amazing. And, um, uh, and now, you, yeah. now you, have a, you have a business now that you didn't before, correct? <laughs> I do. I do indeed. I, Tell I know about I'm that. A Tell thing. Them. Yeah, well, I mean, so much has changed. I have actually moved location myself to my family. And um, Kundalini directed that. And when we did that, um, I began to train as a holistic massage therapist, again, from the Kundalini and from my, my Kundalini teacher. And I now do healing from the Kundalini through massage, Kundalini-infused therapeutic touches, KIT, um, K-I-T-T. Now, the infused actually could also be Kundalini-integrated therapeutic touch or Kundalini intuitive um, therapeutic touch because it is from the Kundalini in me that is gifted and given to the person that comes for healing. Um, And that has been an incredible change in my life. It has affected my family um, in the most beautiful ways. Um, I mean, I have so many examples um, that I could give you, um, some very dramatic, some very quiet. And for clients and people that I don't know, I'm working with cancer patients at the moment um, who have cancer. And the difference that, um, you know, me being given to do this work from the Kundalini that has come into their lives um, is amazing. So, I mean, you talk about the Kundalini footprint um, with each person. It's, It's just amazing. I would never have been... I would not be doing this work now had I not had a Kundalini, if I had not been guided to Euclidism as my Kundalini teacher, because so many things needed to be done. I needed to work on so many things that I really and truly and honestly would not have done had I continued to be in my process on my own without your guidance. Well, let's, and let's, let's, let's let them in on how that meeting first took place. Um, back in 2010, actually, I think it was in 2009, uh, myself and a group of other Kundalini students decided to plan a trip to John of Gods in Brazil. Now, I had never met Amelia before in my life. And, uh, uh, yeah, I my Kundalini wasn't even giving me uh, any kind of an information about uh, how or why or what I was supposed to do with regards to going down to John of Gods. Uh, it was, I think she was just being used as a way to capture people's interest so that they would go to John of Gods and that uh, we could uh, have that first meeting. And how was that first meeting, Amelia? Oh. Well, you see, the amazing thing was um, I had come to the Kundalini Waiting Systems Forum in June of 2009, and so there was that. 
And then towards the end of that year, for the first time, I came across information about John of God and something, you know, something resonated with me. And a couple of days later, and it resonated in a Kundalini way, you know, and a couple of days later, you on the forum put out that you were thinking of, you were going to be going to John of God. Well, I mean, whoosh. And that's, that's how it happened. It was a definite, I was definitely to go and to, to, to Brazil and to meet you there. It's, and that's how, how it unfolded. And um, so I went, I went, I got on a plane, and this was all from the Kundalini within me directing this to occur because I had been a very, very nervous um, traveler. I mean, who'd know now if they met me? But I would have panic attacks, and I mean, I went through a lot of fear and things, and Kundalini had, had begun to help me with that. Um, but I actually got on a plane in Ireland. I traveled to Lisbon, and from Lisbon I traveled to Brazil. Um, and I met with Kristen there, and I met with, um, I think there was eight or nine mm. other Kundalini people from around the world that had come to meet with Kristen. And I was actually, it, I, I, was, I, was, I was late. I was late. I you was were. supposed to be there on Thursday. <laughs> I was there like four, two, three or four days late, as I recall. Yeah. That's correct. That's correct. But we didn't know that until we, anyway. So, uh, but you did come, and um, it was an amazing meeting. And, you know, not amazing in, the, in terms of um, anything spectacular at the time with hello and Chris and Mamanili, but it was as, as it unfolded, as the whole experience in John of God unfolded, as we all, you know, as we communicated, as I received Shakti Pat, as, you know, everything that unfolded there was setting the, the confirmation for me and, you know, the Kundalini agenda for me that Chrism was to be my teacher. And it was from that point that that began to unfold. And, um, yeah, it's, it was amazing. It is amazing. And, you know, yeah, it was the best well, gift I ever gave myself. <laughs> so... What's the easiest task that I have given you to do? The easiest one. What's the easiest? <laughs> oh my goodness me! I mean, the easy. Oh, Chris, am I gone blank? <laughs> I'm thinking easy. <laughs> They're all so easy in their own way. You see, they're difficult if you look at it. Sometimes, from a particular perspective, you could go, "Oh my God!" But in another, what's, all of what's them. The, what's, what's the hardest thing then? Some of the tasks that you would have given to me that um, I, I can't do hardest or easiest, but I can certainly do things that are hard. Some of the hard tasks would be the ones that would have required me to do things that I really did not want to do in the same way that Kundalini does. So you would have given me some physical tasks to do and some tasks to go into my environment, like um, the time that you would have given me to go into very cold water in the forest tree near me. That was very difficult. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds trivial in a way, but it was, there was the most... It, the most amazing thing occurred because of that, because of all the things that rose up in my ego not to do that, after I had given a commitment to do your personal instructions. Do you understand? So it's what rises in me, my ego response, um, that, that I have to choose each time in my surrender. Those are, those are how um, my agenda, how my process develops, you know? So, okay, yeah, so, that is pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, That's jumping good. into the cold water. Cold water is hard, uh, except that it's not once you get in because the kundalini just heats you right up. I mean, that's the whole point of going into the cold water so that you can feel the kundalini heat you right up. Yeah, the staying there for 21 minutes is probably what I'm referring to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to suggest some of the other things that I've had you do, and if, and I'm, uh -huh. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and uh, bring them up here. Uh, I've had you go blindfolded 
uh, in a forest that you're not too overly familiar with. Uh, I've had you go blindfolded uh, from the deep inside of a forest all the way to an exit point in the forest. And I've had you do this as a way of, of surrendering to the instruction that your kundalini gives you to come out of that forest. Am I correct? You are correct. You are absolutely correct. And, and I've, had you, them, I've had you do this in, 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 a, uh, in a condition that is not, not typically normal within our society. I mean, when you're in a forest that you're not familiar with, the last thing any outdoorsman is going to tell you is to put a blindfold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's even worse true. because you know you, you're surrounded with brambles and thorns and branches and rocks and you know various wildlife that's in the forest as well. And you know I I'm having people go into this forest. Uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a fairly challenging way. Yes. Is that right, Amelia? That is correct. That is correct, Chris. And, and what actually occurs, though, as, one, as I began to do that, the first time that, uh, that I did that, again, it's what rises up. But as I proceeded to do that, senses change, kundalini guides, you begin to see through the blindfold because Kundalini directs and moves, moves me through that experience, you know? And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 and you really can, by the way, you can really see through certain things. I mean, I don't know if, uh, if you're using that as just a, a, a matter of saying, but you can, you can literally get to the point where you're able to see through fabric. And I don't mean I don't mean seeing through fabric with your physical eyes. I mean seeing through fabric with your sixth chakra or your ajna or your 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 uh, third eye, as, as people in the West like to refer it to. Uh, you can literally mm. see. You can see through metal. You can see through rock. You can see through wood. You can see through fabric. You can see through all of it. And I, I, you know, I have direct experience with this. I know this occurs. And so therefore I know that the, there's a possibility for it to occur within the student as well. And so of course well, I will have you go. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, what, what, what actually happened was as I began to do that first, because I was also on my hands and knees. And, um, and as I began to move through that way, Initially, I would have been, you know, my hands would have been out and I would have been feeling and, you know, the trees aren't planted particularly in an order, but they're fairly close together. So I would have one hand on the ground and the other ahead of me, you know, so that I wouldn't bash into a tree. Um, but as I had done, continued to do this on the many occasions you gave me to do it, and it wasn't to do with familiarity because this is quite a big area and I would be in different places at different times. I eventually didn't have to put my hands out at all. I knew I, I could actually travel for 10 or 15 minutes and never know when to go right and go left because Kundalini directed me in that way. And there was a vision, maybe not quite, maybe not quite visually as you're speaking there, but there was um, a vision without sight so that I did not hit anything. And that was given from the Kundalini. It was like a censoring, a censor. That's, that, that's very cool. And, and, and I'm going to add more. Uh, can you turn your... I can. Thank you. Do you have headphones? Amelia, try to put your headphones on. That. Yes, I, I do. I have actually excellent headphones. Okay. Um, they're I'm going to use again. Okay. Uh, with Amelia, the instruction, you know, well, I'm only giving you part of the information that's going on with Amelia. Um, I will ask you to, through the Kundalini, that, you know, the Kundalini will ask you through me to do certain things. And uh, going, 
going into the to the environment that way is one of those things that will occur. Um, and and I've even uh, had people go into the environment without their clothing on, and doing similar things. And uh, you know that also changes things because without the clothing, we're you know we feel very 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 exposed because we are. But we feel exposed in other ways too. But at the same time as we're feeling exposed, we're also getting vivified with the energy, and the energy is is exciting the chakras that. The, the, the minor nadis uh, that are law all through the skin and all through the hands and the and all the chakras and the fingertips and then the palm of the hand. I mean, all of this stuff is being put on high alert because you're in an unfamiliar environment. You're 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 dressed in an unfamiliar way. You're feeling very exposed. You're feeling kind of frightened in a way, and you're wondering, oh, how the heck am I going to make it to to you know outside of this forest and and it takes a, you know, a very very strong level of trust within the Kundalini, to to do this. And and Amelia, you know, has demonstrated this, or it wouldn't have been given to her. And uh, she's able to do these things. And and uh, it really is a a level of of purification, but also a purity for the soul with regards to. Uh, taking uh, instruction from a kundalini teacher or from the kundalini itself. Uh, it's a very, very, very strong level of trust and surrender and, and compassion. And, you know, from the teacher's point of view, from the kundalini's point of view, it's going to really, 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 and it's supposed to push you. It's going to push you and it's supposed to push you. Um, I get a lot of uh, students saying, oh, my gosh, you're, like, going so fast or... You know, you're not going fast enough. Well, <laughs> it's, it's the kundalini that is really determining the uh, the progress uh, that a student is, is to make at a given time. The kundalini realizes that, you know, this isn't done in a day. It's not like, oh, wow, yeah, I had kundalini last summer. It was really cool. What's next? You know, it's not like that. Kundalini doesn't ever go away. You know, if the if the person were really to ask the question in a in a in a in a in a, in a format that is truthful, it's it's oh, yeah, the Kundalini awakened in me this last summer, and I'm still inside of it, and I'm still you know learning and processing and learning and processing and and you know doing all of these different things. And oh, by the way, yeah, it led me to a teacher, and this teacher is having me do certain things. Now, I want to invite everyone who who uh, who is listening to this information, to to respond to your kundalini. If your kundalini is saying, yeah, yeah, use Krishna as your teacher, then I want you to respond. Respond and allow that teaching to come for you. Don't be overly shy. Don't be so wrapped up in your routine. Oh, my gosh, what if he tells me to do something that I'm not used to doing? Oh, my God. You know, I want you to be fluidic enough to allow yourself the ability to follow instructions that you're not used to to be to receiving or following. Okay, right. you know people get really enamored with their life. You know, um, they want their boyfriends, they want their girlfriends, they want their car, they want their good job, they want to make a lot of money, they want to have a nice, beautiful house or a flat to live in. They want things their way and typically along the lines of what the ego in them wants. Well, when the kundalini comes along, that ego position is going to diminish in its authority over how the life is being lived. Much more authority is given to the kundalini, if not absolute authority being given to the kundalini in how a person lives their life. Now, the kundalini isn't you know, yearning to live vicariously a, a, a life uh, through the person that's, that's, that's living it or through the person that's having the kundalini. It's, kundalini doesn't really, you know, it's already, in many ways, kundalini is part of the divine force that even created material existence at all. So it doesn't really have an agenda. It's like, oh, yeah, how cool it would be to live Amelia's life. Let's go ahead and awaken in her, and then we'll call Chris and on there. We'll make it really interesting. It's not like that. 
Once the Kundalini comes, it has ascertained that you are ready to have these teachings come to you, and these teachings will come to you with or without your permission. With or without your, your permission, and with or without your understanding. Okay, you don't... Oh, I see. Chan Zhao is typing. I hope I'm not destroying your name. K-H-A-N-J-A-U. How do you pronounce that, Amelia? Chan Zhao. I don't know. That's all right. It's all right. And Rosemary, I know that you have to leave in in in, in uh, you know this ninety minutes. So, uh, did she have a question, Amelia? Did Rosemary have a question? Oh, actually, I see that she might have now. Not initially. Will I put her through? Yeah, put her through, please. Thank put, you. I put her through now. Ah, and Kanjao is asking. So, how does one become a student of Chrism? Well, first of all, Kanjao, uh, welcome, welcome to the conversation. And second of all. All you have to do is express an interest in becoming a student uh, and a willingness to to practice what the teacher is giving you to do. Think about what I had Amelia do. This is the hardest thing I've had her do, I think. I'm not sure. She'd have to tell you. Uh, You know, going through the forest, uh, blindfolded, on your hands and knees, without clothing. I mean, think about that. Think about that. That's not the easiest thing to do. And and it's there's no guarantee that the Kundalini in me would even ask you to do that. Okay? It would not, you know, it's not necessarily for you to do. Okay? But uh, if you do want to become a, a student of Chrism, all you have to do is want to become a student of Chrism. And, and, I'd, like, and I'd welcome you to do that. And I'd like to welcome Robert to the conversation. I see he's here. Um, go ahead, uh, Rosemary. Hello, Rosemary. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. Did you have a question? I see a question mark next to your yes. number there. You know, what I was thinking as you're talking, not specific things, but uh, how I'm an older person, so I have worked, quote, all my life, to lead a good life and develop the habits that I have. And even like speaking up for myself for things that I thought thought were important. And in this new context, none of it is. It is not at all the context of Kundalini. is not at all. I mean, I was doing it. Well, 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 I have to to disagree with you a little bit now. I mean, let's look at uh, the 25 years you spent as a, as a spiritually oriented individual. That was all well, about the Kundalini too. Yeah, no, I wasn't meaning that. I was meaning probably the more the last year since there, maybe the year since oh, leaving yeah. there or sure, um, sure. just simple things, even about my food and and my my uh schedule and where I put my time or you know and and I'm sure people would, my friends, think that I really work hard <laughs> leading a good life. And, and, I, and I do, or my generosity, or where I want my, my, um, my money gifts to go. And, and then to have all those things questioned and be willing to get them up. And you know you can testify. Sometimes I struggle with it, and it takes me a little while. It does, it does, and that's... That's with a lot of people. Um, we're not used to having our ego uh, mm. uh, challenged. We're not used to having the ego challenged, and that's, that's a big deal right there, to have the ego challenged, because we identify so much with our, with our survival instinct. We, we identify with it through our, our emotional uh, expression, our physical expression, sexual expression, mental expression. I mean... We identify with the ego more than we identify with the kundalini at first. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, in your special case, your special process, Rosemary, you needed to do everything that you did in your life in order to have what you have right now. 
Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You bet. Oh, okay. I see Shamash Absu Sin is testing to see if chat works. Um, it, it does. It does. There, uh, Rosemary. Thank you. Thank you for calling in and thank you for listening and and uh, yeah, thank you for asking your question. I I don't know if I answered. It. It's kind of more of a statement than a question from you. It feels. Um, I'd like to welcome Shamash Absu then to uh, to the conversation, and anybody else new that is that is uh, joining us uh, today. If you do have a question and you would like to ask, as Rosemary just did, please call this number. It is area code three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Uh, yes, the, uh, the the chat function does work. And if you do have a question and you don't want to call in, feel free to write it out on chat. I uh, on my laptop I can see the chat uh, group quite easily on the on the iPad. I don't get to see it at all, so you know I'm on my laptop right now. Um, so yeah, as the way Amelia described it, I think is the is the the, the closest uh, um, e- expression of truth. When I am giving her an instruction, her Kundalini already knows the instruction that I'm going to give and why I'm giving it and what the purpose is for it to be given and whether or not it is something that she needs to do. Kundalini already knows that. You know, in a way, it will know things before I even know them. It can see patterns of probability that I'm not even able to 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 see. Kundalini can see it. Okay, and so it is definitely a a level of being taught by the kundalini, through the kundalini, from a teacher that has already had these levels of kundalini teachings uh, given into him or her. Okay, So in this, in this scenario, yeah, yeah, the, the kundalini in you and the kundalini in me are, are going to be on the same page, but our ego, the ego will not be on the same page. And it you know, that's a natural aspect. You know, the ego is used to being in charge, and so it will typically have a problem with uh, giving itself over to the control of, of a much higher and more powerful perspective of divine grace, which the kundalini is. The kundalini, in many ways, at the early stages, is it's all about building a cocoon. And the cocoon is, is building a space for your transformation to happen in a way that is safe and secure and open for a person to have change come into their life. A space for change. It's that that crucible of change that is being created for you. And part of that cocoon is to have a teacher. Now, not everybody's going to be open to having a teacher, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting that having a teacher is for everyone. Uh, it is it is very helpful for those that for some and I, I would even say for the most part for the most people it is very helpful to have information and to have a teacher that can help you but I didn't have a teacher I mean I looked and looked and looked and looked and looked for a teacher and at the time that I was having my early awakening uh, uh, um, phenomena there wasn't an internet and there you know cell phones were still quite large if that tells you anything um, there wasn't anybody. And so not everybody is, is destined to have a teacher. Uh, but for those of you who are hearing this right now, I will suggest that for you, the availability of a teacher is there for you. Ah, there you are, Robert Ellingson. Finally, the chat works for me. Nice to be here. Well, it's nice to have you, Robert. Thank you for joining us. And that goes for you, Shamash, and for you, Kanjao. Uh, and for everybody here, Celestial Ruby, Spashji, and all the various guest numbers that we have, uh, Tim Ashworth and everybody, thank you for joining us. Um, so, yeah, with regards to these, to the availability of a teacher um, for you, well, yeah, there is a there is a teacher who is, you know, who's been at this for 24 years and has had it awakened for that long, that amount of time, and uh, you know, this person can help you. But you must want to have a teacher, and you must, you know, agree 
to follow those instructions. And the kundalini is listening to your agreements. And it knows the patterns of probability about you fulfilling those agreements. And the agreements aren't hard. I mean, you know, you know, I gave you uh, millions of, you know, most difficult thing. You know, you notice the most difficult thing wasn't being, you know, dropped into the middle of a war zone and asked to wave a white flag so that everybody stops fighting and everybody is just really happy and helpful. And it's just not going to happen that way. <laughs> not to say that you won't get dropped into the middle of a battlefield, but typically uh, you don't. You know, the only battlefield you get dropped into is the one between your your kundalini phenomena and the ego acceptance of that phenomena. And that can be quite the battlefield, believe me. Now, let's see. If Robert or Kanjao or Tim or Shamash or, or Fashi, anybody else wants to call in, uh, here's the phone number. It's a United States area code, 347-934-0026. One of the things that the Kundalini in me uh, gave to me earlier this morning uh, was it wanted me to talk about the voice. And so I'm going to talk with you now about the voice. The voice that you're hearing with regards to this uh, radio uh, program is heavily laden with the Kundalini Shakti to the point where you should be able to meditate while you're listening to this information. For those of you like Fashji and Julie and Tim and some of the other people that have been here, Rosemary, uh, Eileen, you should be able to hear the voice and to feel the kundalini in the voice. Let the voice, as you hear it, let it reach into you. Uh, the kundalini that comes through me is is a representation of divine love. It is love. It is divine love. It is the founding expression in love. But it's all aspects of love. It's not just the, you know, cotton candy, candy apple, ooey gooey, oh, I love you so much. It's not all about that. Okay. <laughs> It is about that, but it's not just about that. It's about the hard lessons of love. It's about heartbreak. Anybody here had a heartbreak? It's about having that kind of an experience. It's, it's about losing a loved one. It's about that kind of experience. It's about uh, you know having a, a marriage and and and, and uh, you know the birth of a child. It's about that kind of love too. It's not all about the bad part of love. It's about the good part of love, too. And it's about all the various uh, areas in between those, those uh, frequencies of love. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. So with regards to, to having a teacher, you're not going to be asked to do things that the kundalini in you does not want you to do. Uh, yes, you'll be asked to, to uh, modify your diet. You'll be asked to modify your schedule. You'll be asked to bring more of a recognition of kundalini as a real, viable, energetic consciousness uh, in your life. It, you know, Give more validation to that. Give your understanding to that. Uh, trust the kundalini in you. Trust it to give you a teacher, a flesh teacher, that will help you come through some of the more difficult areas of the kundalini. It is important to have a flesh teacher. This is why you have Aurobindo and Ramakrishna and Yogananda and Jesus and Buddha and Kuan Yin and, and great father spirit, great mother spirit. This is why you have these people. These, these these concepts in your life. It's not so that you just go it alone, you know. I mean, I was kind of forced to go it alone. You know, that was that was my karma. That was my that was what I had to go through. Uh but during that that level I sure wished I'd have had a teacher, a flesh teacher, somebody that I could shake hands with and, and say, Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate the uh, the teachings that you've given and and you know, this was not allowed for me to have but this was allowed for me to become. 
And it would be an honor for me to have that for you. As I've been having it for Amelia and for Rosemary and for Fosji and and for other people. And uh, I see that Robert is typing, and so I'll go ahead and wait for him to, to do that. But having a flesh teacher is very important. Now, you have to understand that the only reason that you, that is helpful to have a flesh teacher is because you're going to come into areas that are quite challenging for you, certainly for your ego and certainly for the egos around you. Okay, very, very, very challenging areas. I mean, just the idea of, of, uh, of kundalini itself and how it doesn't have a taboo that it won't cross through. And let's see, uh, I'm reading Julie here. I've been going it alone for too long and would like to work more closely with you if I may. And yes, you most certainly may, uh, Julie. Uh, But listen to what it is I'm saying here right now. I mean, how committed can you be to to giving yourself to the Kundalini? And I understand that you have a a husband and a young son, and that's all good. That that that's all good. I mean, that's that's serving your kundalini right there by being the nurturing, excellent mother you are. And and I hope you don't mind me saying that you are an excellent mother. And uh, I would welcome a closer uh, uh, teacher-student relationship with you. And job. Oh yes, that's right. And job. <laughs> great, great. No, so so yeah. Yeah, I'm very interested in that, and uh, and uh, we'll you and I will talk more about this on uh, Facebook if if, you, if you're okay with that. Uh, but for any of the others, uh, any anybody else that may have an interest in this, yeah, I want you to be cogent of the availability of of having a flesh teacher. It's not something that I mean, you know, I didn't really start out with this talk to to advertise myself as a flesh teacher, but I do, it seems to be matriculating this way. Um, You have options. You have options. And and I think that the most important thing for you to do is to follow your consciousness, your kundalini consciousness, in having those options um, materialize for you. Let's see, I've been working up to this, you know, I have fear, and that is, well, yeah, yeah. We all have fear, though, Judy. We all have fear about this. It's never easy to change in these ways. And these are some very, very large changes in a person's life. And and so I want you to understand that these changes are are there for everyone, not just you. These changes and these fears, actually, everybody has these fears, and... and uh, and you can rest at ease because you have nothing to fear. Your kundalini will not allow anything to occur for you that you cannot have and that it does not agree with you having. What will happen, like say, okay, okay, I'll give you a, this is a fictitious instruction for Julie here. Fictitious instruction, okay? This is not real. Do not do this at home. I would, you know, I would, I would uh, give Julie a, a, okay, Julie, I want you to go and rope yourself to the leg of an elephant and spend a day with that elephant family roped to their leg. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> so, Julie, I don't want you to have any concerns except the only concern that you really need to have, and Robert, I'm going to get to your question here in a real quick moment here. Uh, if you have any concerns, let it be how it is you're going to be able to to have a teacher in your life. What level of authority are you going to give that teacher over your life? You know, look at those areas and and uh, and and uh, consider that. Uh, let's see. I'm I'm going to Robert Ellingson now. Hello, Robert. When Kundalini for the first time awakened in me several years ago, nobody in my culture could help me on what was going on. Oh, I know that. I know that. From their point of view, I was sick. It, I wasn't. Uh, yeah, well, people are going to think you're ill, and so you certainly don't want to 
tell anybody that you're having, you know, the kind of phenomena that you may have been having. Um, it wasn't until I started searching for answers in other cultures that I finally understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Robert, I would like to congratulate you, first of all, for having your Kundalini awaken. I want to congratulate you, second of all, surviving <laughs> the awakening of the Kundalini. Some, you know, some people get, you know, they self-commit into the psych ward, or you know, some people will actually it becomes so difficult for them that they commit suicide. So I'm very, very happy. Uh, to to read you, uh, Robert Ellingson, in, in in the fact that you have the Kundalini and that uh, you're here uh, joining us in the conversation. So congratulations, Robert. And uh, if there's anything that I can do to make your path smoother or or more informative for you, you have only to ask. Uh, you have only to ask with this, and uh, and I will do what my kundalini allows me to do with regards to your um, your personal um, what's the word I'm looking for here? <laughs> your, your personal equation. Okay. Uh, and this is how it works through me. Okay, so we'll just say that uh, Julie and I, you know, we, you know, we start talking about the student-teacher relationship and, and immediately I am given instruction for that student. Immediately. I'm, I'm given uh, a little bit of a, of a view into that person's kundalini perspective. And from there, uh, certain uh, understandings and instructions are given. And some of them are scary. Some of them are scary. You know, I mean, if, my, if, if I had a teacher and the teacher said to me, oh, Chris, I want you to go out into the forest, you know, remove your clothing, put this blindfold on, and find your way back. <laughs> Challenging, to say the least. But actually, the Kundalini has done that to me, and I have done that. And uh, and it does work well. It does work well. Very, very well, actually. Um, so I want to open up that to you, Robert, and to, as I have, to Julie, and, and, and to any of the other people that, that are looking for a, a flesh teacher. Flesh teacher is not the... It's not the... the it's 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 kind of a difficult thing to be because you uh, you don't get to well you become the target of a lot of dissatisfaction for people whose ego outweigh their own uh, spiritual awareness. the The ego may outweigh their spiritual awareness, and from that uh, they may give in to what the ego wants them to do. And, and, and typically that will not be the, uh, the most beneficial thing for their Kundalini Awakening equation. And you're most welcome, Robert Ellingson. You said thank you very much, and I want to, uh, to, uh, to thank you for, for joining us in this conversation. Uh, so if you have any questions about your Kundalini Awakening equation or experiences or phenomena, or if you have a comment that you'd like to make, uh, please call United States Area Code 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. And, um, okay, very good. So... I'm going to leave this last half hour for people who would like to call in or who, people who would like to ask a question on the, uh, on the chat group. Um, please feel free to do so. Uh, I will go ahead and, uh, and continue relating uh, what the Kundalini would, would like me to relate. And this is with regards to your fear. It's always a scary type of situation to to basically walk off that cliff. Everything about you, your ego, your body, your you know, your experience of life is saying, Oh, don't walk off a cliff because you'll fall and you might be injured or killed. And the Kundalini may say, Oh, uh, Kristen, I want you to walk off this cliff. It's okay. I want you to trust me, but go ahead and walk off the cliff. You know, that's a hard thing to do for people. And yeah, because I've had this for so long and I know to trust it, then I just walk right off that cliff. 
uh, you know, and Amelia and, 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 and Rosemary and, and Eileen and some of my other students, you know, uh, within various varying degrees, you know, they will walk off that cliff because they know the Kundalini is there to help them. They know that they're not going to be harmed. They know that it's a level of reaching out and, and, and taming your fears. T-A-M-I-N-G, taming your fears. This is a big deal for part of the initial journey into the Kundalini is to not allow your fears to control you. Not allow your fears to make your choices and your decisions for you. Okay? This is something that you really need to consider strongly. Um, you know, if you if you have fears about the Kundalini, and then it you know it go ahead it, it, it awakens in you. Well, those fears are going to be somewhat pronounced um, because the Kundalini has an amplifying effect upon pretty much everything in your life. Okay, listen to the voice, listen to the truth in these words. You can feel it. Those of you that have the Kundalini right now, listen to the voice with your kundalini ears. Listen to the level of truth or lie. If you feel that there's a lie coming through, listen to that too. You have to know the experience of hearing a lie and you have to know the experience of hearing truth before you can assimilate the two, you know, in the best possible way for yourself. Okay? Okay? Feel the voice affecting you right now. Feel it. As I mentioned before, the Kundalini really wanted me to to talk a lot about the voice, but not just about the voice. But right now, yes, listen to the voice. Listen to the energy in the voice, the consciousness in the voice. Feel the vibrations of sound that are coming into your ears and feel the level of energy that is on top of those sounds or part of those sounds. I have a CD out, and, and you know the Kundalini had me make that CD specifically for the qualities of grace that were transmitted upon those CDs through the chanting and the and the psalms and the uh, the the teachings that are given on that CD. And if you want that CD, you can uh, you can email Eileen Loro at E Loro E L O R O five five at yahoo dot com. So that's E L O R O five five at yahoo dot com. If you want that CD, I only have one CD. Um, I'll be trying to make another one uh, at the beginning of this year, this new year. And so if you want that, you can talk to Eileen or you could call Amelia about that as well. And, and uh, her, uh, her email address is uh, uh, kundaliniematters at gmail.com. So uh, you can explore those areas with it. The, also, the other thing that you might want to do, and this has been uh, suggested in other conversations that we've had, is to look at the healing photo. If you look at the healing photo while you're listening to the words, uh, you can become quite meditative, if not uh, achieve a level of of uh, I don't want to use the word trance. It's not a trance that you want to get into. It's just I guess a very strong meditative quality of absorption and feel the truth there. Feel the lack of truth there. Feel your your questions and feel your joy and feel your love and, and feel the grace that is within you and allow that to determine whether or not you feel that this information is going to be good for you or not. Oops, sorry about that. Sorry about that. This is not supposed to be on. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, yeah, feel the truth in these words. Feel the truth in the teaching. Listen to the other broadcasts. 
I have been doing this for a full year now. I have 52 broadcasts that we have done since 12-12-2012. Okay? 52 broadcasts for you. Uh, so you need to understand this. Now, I have to tell you that, that this next uh, Wednesday, a week from today, uh, we are not going to do the show, and we are not going to do a show on uh, New Year's Day either. Um, uh, certain people have asked for that not to occur, and so, of course, you know, I'm not going to force it. You're very welcome, Robert Ellingson. You're very welcome. Uh, so the next two weeks, there will not be a, a, uh, a Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 conversation. Okay, so just be advised of that. For the next two weeks, we will not be having a show. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and, 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 and I apologize in advance if this uh, interrupts anybody. But, uh, yeah, uh, Amelia needs some time off to spend with her family and, and uh, you know, and, and other people do too. So uh, in, in honor of that and in honor of you, uh, uh, you know, partaking of your family and the, and the festive festivities of the holidays, yeah, yeah. I, I want to. I, I don't want you to, to to feel like you're missing out on anything. There will be no shows for the next two weeks. Uh, the next show will be, however, let me get that calendar up here. The next show will be. Sorry, I'm doing this on the computer here. The next show will be on. Uh, the 8th of January, okay? So New Year's Day, which is a Wednesday, we will not have a show, and Christmas Day, which is a Wednesday, we will not have a show, but on the 8th of January is when we will have the next show, okay? So I just wanted you to uh, to know that in advance. If you have any questions, and I know, Robert, you've been typing. Christmas seems to be having network problems. Hmm. Vashti, I don't know how I can help you with that, but if it's not coming through clearly now, maybe you should check the archives later on and see if, if that will work for you. And Robert, I noticed you've been typing, but I haven't been able to see what you've been reading or what you've been writing. So um, um, I don't know what to, to say with you there. Um, listen to the voice. Listen to the voice. Go back into these 52 broadcasts that have been done since 12-12-2012. Uh, listen to the voice. Uh, and, you know, we've had a lot of technical issues with uh, Blog Talk Radio, uh, but it seems to be a really good choice for, for a lot of people, and so I want to keep doing it here. But, uh, you know, we've had some... We've had some fairly major technical issues going on, and some of those you'll see in the in the first uh, conversations that we were having. But uh, I, I, I do believe that for the most part, I will have to say 80% of these conversations are intact, and uh, there you are able to to partake of the information that's given to them. And go ahead and do that. Um, go ahead and partake of these things. Don't. Don't feel that, that, you know, you have to go this alone. You're never alone with the Kundalini. It's always there with you. Uh, some of you would do well to have a flesh teacher. Most of you would do well to have a flesh teacher. Uh, the, the, one of the big things uh, is to get your ego out of the way. You know, I don't need a flesh teacher. I'm a flesh person right now. I'm on my own flesh teacher. Dang it. <laughs> You don't have to, you know, you don't have to have a blessed teacher for sure. But uh, I think for the most part, many of you would, would be, uh, would, would benefit from it. Uh, well, let's see, here we are. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Chrisom, I see you. Okay, this is, I certainly will. I can hear you, but the site is difficult to communicate with you. Perhaps it is because there are many listeners tonight. There are. Um um, I've been trying to build up the Kundalini energy from 
energy from the bottom chakras by not allowing myself any sexual pleasures for some time, then it works. But after a while, the frustration comes and the energy flowing through my body stops. Yeah, uh, Robert, um, you don't want to confuse kundalini with chi energy. They're two different things. Okay, Prana and chi have a closer relationship than chi and kundalini. Uh, chi and prana are components of the kundalini, but they are not the consciousness of the kundalini. They're simply components of it. Just as, as our toe is not our eyeball, and our eyeball is not our toe, but they're on the same body, and they do two different things. Okay. Um, as far as uh, abstaining from, from sexual expression... I think the Kundalini, uh, in in many ways, in times, uh, enjoys not having a sexual, a, shall we say, a fluidic release of sexual uh, energies, and that uh, you know, in many times, I will I will counsel a person not to to let the the uh, the sacred seed spill from the body, but rather to let the Kundalini have it, give the sacred seed, while it's still in the body, give the sacred seed to the kundalini, and what you'll feel is called a GFA. G as in as in good, F as in frank, A as in apple. And this is genital fluidic ascendance. And what this is, is the body is composed of uh, many little minor pumps in the body. And certain mechanisms will allow this pumping to occur. And GFA is one of those me- one of those uh, mechanisms that will allow a, a pumping of the reproductive fluids into the spinal cord vis-a-vis. Uh, uh, in the in, in the man, it'll be through the prostate, and in the women, uh, in the woman, it'll be straight through uh, the ovaries. I'm sorry, the the ovaries, but also the. Uh, um, uh, straight into the spine from the. Uh, I have to choose my words very carefully because this is a public program. Um, through the reproductive organs of the woman, uh, this this happens equally with both genders. However, uh, with the male, uh, the male, it's it's fairly tactile. It's very very tactile. You can feel it, and and uh, it's very fast. It's a fast pump, but you'll feel it. You'll feel it, and it'll. It'll definitely let itself be known to you that it is occurring, and so that'll it'll take that the the seminal fluid straight up into the into the lower spinal area, and uh, it'll begin to change that into a force of nourishment for the Kundalini transformation. Okay, uh, so. I would certainly suggest that you stop doing it, but I don't want you to think that the frustration is going to have the ability to control how the energy flows through your body. Your expectation of that uh, can, can form a blockage. Okay, your expectation of the feeling to be a certain way can form a blockage to the kundalini doing what it sees is necessary to your physical transformation. So if you can take your expectation, Robert, out of that equation and just give, give the entire sexual uh, experience to the kundalini. So, you know, there's no self-stimulation. There's nothing. There's no, you give it completely to the kundalini and then that complete gifting will have a very, very significant effect upon your uh, kundalini awakening phenomena. Now, if you're just going out after the phenomena, Robert, uh, once again, the kundalini knowing that you're just going for the phenomena, you know, this is going to, once again, form an expectation blockage. Uh, and then you may you may enter into a plateau event, which is what happens when, when the kundalini has given you enough and that now it wants you to process a little bit before you start climbing the next mountain. Okay. Uh, so yeah, do your best to 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 give the entire experience to the Kundalini, 
So you can transform the sexual energy over to the Kundalini. No, you don't transform it. You just give it. You give the entire sexual expression to the Kundalini. And the Kundalini will take it. It will take it from you. And you'll, you'll feel these, these, uh, these movements inside the uh, reproductive system of the male. You'll, see, you'll feel movements there. You'll feel spastic, jumpy type of movements there. And that spasticity in the movements in that area is the pumping. Uh, and you can actually feel it. You can actually, I mean, the, the, the seminal fluid will travel up the vas differens and into the seven uh, organs that contribute to the seven fluids of the seminal uh, expression in the male. And you'll feel that that energy being pumped into the spine. It's, you literally feel it. And, and it's not just me saying a lot of guys. A lot of guys and a lot of women have been able to feel this energy going there. And, 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 uh, and for you, uh, Robert, I would say continue along this line, but just take your expectations out of it. One and one does not equal two with the Kundalini. Uh, if you sometimes it does, sometimes, but for the most part, you don't want to go with a linear mindset with regards to the Kundalini. You want to take yourself right out of linear expectation. So, in, in other words, if you're saying, "Well, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have any sex at all, and, and that's gonna give me a lot of Kundalini phenomena," well, if that's your expectation, the Kundalini may not fulfill it for you. For some, it will. For some it will, but for for some it will not. And that a lot of that is going to be determined by the person's karma. You know what? Why they're here? What problems they have to deal with while they're here? What is part of their energetic agenda within the kundalini while they're having this stage of the kundalini? So yes, uh, the energy of the kundalini itself, the conscious kundalini, is what will transform. Uh, the sexual energy into a plasma which will be given in to the spine and which will begin to affect the endocrine system primarily first. But in addition to the, the endocrine system, every other system, whether it's of the energetic anatomy or the flesh anatomy, will also uh, receive transformation from that. But the transformation isn't always tactile. Much of it is, but most of it isn't. You don't get to feel every single cell going through a transformation. You just don't get to because it just drives you crazy. You know, your ego would be trying to keep track of 17 trillion cellular kundalini transformations, and I don't recommend it. <laughs> Unless you've got a really, really solid obsessive-compulsive thing going, and you can really keep track of that. I don't suggest it. <laughs> and you'll... You'll find that with a lot of people, I'm running out of time here, I'm down to 11 minutes. Well, I want to say that a lot of people will have an excessive, obsessive, compulsive uh, expression, and that is natural for kundalini people. So if you have the OCD, uh, you're not sick. You may just be having kundalini. Okay, you don't need to take medication for OCD if it's coming from the kundalini. For those of you that would like to join in the conversation, feel free to call United States Area Code 347-934-0026. And I see, Robert, that you're, you're typing some more. Just want you to know that that uh, I'm not seeing it yet. <laughs> Fashji, uh, getting back to your uh, situation, uh, I can hear you, but the site is difficult to communicate with you. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that. So, Fashji, let's communicate uh, maybe on Facebook or something like that. And, uh, and uh, you know, until we can find another vector or venue where, where there can be a greater give and take uh, phone in and answer type scenario, then we'll, we'll have to stick with this. Let's see, Robert, I still don't see your post here. I hope you sent it. Um, coming down to the last few minutes of this conversation. Amelia, is there anything that you would like to say as uh, as we're waiting? 
Well, I, I, there are one or two things all right, Chris, in, in relation to the seminar I gave out wrong dates. I need okay. to just say that the seminar in Ireland, and thank you, Eileen, I need to just say that the seminar in Ireland is happening on the 29th and the 30th of March, not, as I had said, the previous week. So that's the first thing. And I suppose just to say to Julie, I understand the fear and um, the fear aspect, but there really is nothing to fear. When, you know, when, for me anyway, when I decided in inverted commas, when I knew that I was to have an English teacher, that Chrissy was going to be my teacher, that was um, a contract I made with my Kundalini or my Kundalini made with me. It was a choice and a decision that was made. And no matter what comes up for me after that, I do not move away from that because it was the right choice. And so no matter what my ego does, you know, when it sways and it does its thing, um, I am always rooted in that, in, from that place. Actually, Chris, and there's a caller online. Will I just put the caller? St- oh, oh, Chris is speaking. Okay. So, Julie, um, that's, that's how it works for me. I, I know that my choice to have prison as my teacher was the correct one. I know that it was guided to be that way from my Kundalini. Um, and so that is the rock that I make all my decisions on. Okay, Chris, and you're back. Okay, okay. okay. Let's see. Robert, uh, thank you, Chris. Would you say that the feeling of frustration could be old karma burning, or is this a little off track compared to the Kundalini? Hmm. Uh, the frustration is from the ego, and the frustration is from the ego not able to have what it wants. Okay, the ego wants that sexual, you know, experience. It wants that, and if it doesn't get that, it's going to get frustrated and it's going to get pissy about it. No, pun intended there. Um, <laughs> it's going to get upset over that, um, and so. That upset feeling is what you're tying into. Uh, you're burning karma all the time, uh, especially with uh, with your practice of, of, uh, of you know the sexual practice that you're partaking of. Uh, you're burning karma and you're feeding your kundalini much faster than if you uh, were not doing that. Okay, but the feeling of irritation or frustration is strictly of the ego. The kundalini is not feeling this. And your higher mental functioning self is not feeling this, but your ego is feeling this. Okay, and so you know within that within that understanding, um, let's see. I just need to hang on, giving the energy over to the kundalini, the frustration will go away. Um, give everything, actually, Robert. I mean, at your stage that I'm seeing you at right now, uh, give everything to the kundalini, everything. Don't just start, don't just do the first, just, not just with the sexual issues, but with the food issues, with your uh, recreational libation issues, uh, with, with whatever substances you may partake of uh, that, that may have a, uh, an altering effect on you. Uh, begin to really look into purification of who you are and how you are really begin to get into that. Uh, there's more heart work for you to do, Robert. I'm looking right into you right now. Uh, there's a lot more heart work to do of a male nature on the, on the male side of your heart. Uh, there's a lot more masculine type of, of uh, loving service for you to experience and to give in your process at this point. Okay. Yeah, okay, all right, very good. Um, (laughs) Yeah, okay, all right. So with the last four minutes that we have for this program, I believe there's a question here. Coming to you, Fasci. Master C, I, you know, all I need to do is just wait, and you'll, you'll, um, generally answer most questions that I might have. 
<laughs> I, I have to tell you, I, <laughs> you just stolen <laughs> my fire. <laughs> I um I, I have absolutely nothing to ask. Um I I, I realized that um the, the the problem I was having was uh network wise was on my end. And um I, I'm just pleased to hear the, the discussion tonight. Um and that's pretty much it. Like I said, you pretty much answered um uh, my questions because um I have found uh for Robert uh, being a Robert, I, I'm, a, I'm a married man, and um, the Kundalini will will absolutely uh, have its way, uh, whether you like it or not. And, and as Master C has said, you know, it's best to surrender to this. And this this this, this part that you brought up, Master C, about developing something in the heart, I you know, it's it. I will save this for another time, but I will bring this up on on January eighth. Um, <laughs> how <laughs> how you know this this whole thing of how the Kundalini can strip you of your your masculineness, if uh, masculinity, if you will, and make you so humble that you are able to to cry. And and to express joy and gratitude to people that do uh, wonderful things based on how you have lived your life, and I'm going to leave it at that. And well, I thank, thank you. you for taking my call. Thank you, Pastor, you for making that call. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it can strip you of, of your ego ideas of masculine self-worth. Um, but nothing is wrong. If all of a sudden you lose your libido, either male or female, if you lose your libido, married or not, it's the kundalini that is doing it. It is not a problem. You don't need to, to go to a doctor. Okay? If you lose your libido inside kundalini, it's just because kundalini wants that libido. It doesn't want you to express sexually. So don't try to self-stimulate to the point where you damage yourself because you're having an expectation of a sexual experience that is not being allowed to have for you to have at this point. So know this and understand this and, and be okay with this because it is part of the uh, the equation. And uh, Shamash, I see that you are typing, and I'm also seeing that we have a minute and 35 seconds left. And so rather than cutting you off by... by uh, by not answering your question, I would invite you to come back on January 8th and uh, ask that question again. I can feel this pumping you speak of as we speak here. Yay! I'm also in the practice of offering the sexual energy of the Kundalini. Nicely done. Nicely done, Shamash. Keep going with that. Keep going with that. And you know you know what I'm talking about with that little pumping action down there. Very well. Very well done. Now, now Ken Zhao, I see that you're typing a question, too. <laughs> And I'm down to 59 seconds. Uh, I'll read it, but but if I in, in case uh, they they cut us off, and they will cut us off, I want to thank everyone for for joining us in this conversation today. Truly, an enlightening group. Oh yeah, 90 seconds. Uh, truly, a, a pleasure to 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 serve all of you. Thank God, I thought something is wrong with me for not having a libido. No, no, no. A lot more is right about that than wrong. A lot more. Okay, my friends, I want to say thank you very, very, very much for joining me in this conversation. I'm down to 20 seconds. Uh, Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Shamash. Uh, uh, We'll see you. (laughs) They're telling me they're going to cut me off in 60 seconds. I will talk with you on January 8th. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. We'll see you next year.